My dear students in Advanced Macro, in the first video today, I told you something about life cycle consumption as a consequence of a very particular utility function that was a CARA utility function. A utility function with an absolute risk aversion. It is more common today, nowadays, to use a different type of utility function. And this version is commonly denoted by the following uh, term. Let the utility of consumption in round T be equal to consumption CT to the power of 1 minus sigma minus 1 over 1 minus sigma. And the perimeter sigma, let that be somewhere between 0 and 1. Now, in order to observe the curvature and the slope of this function, have a look at the first derivative. The first derivative of CT, well, we just take the first derivative of the numerator, which is, well then, uh, 1 minus sigma CT to the power of, well, we reduce it by 1, then it's only minus sigma, but this is divided by 1 minus sigma, so we can basically simplify and erase this. So it's just CT to the power of minus sigma. Apparently, this is larger than zero. Whatever level you have here, it tells you that probably, most probably, the uh, slope is decreasing. In order to show this to you, we take the second derivative of CT, and this is then equal to minus sigma times CT. Now we are reducing the exponent by 1, so we have minus sigma minus 1. And now you see this is smaller than 0. So we're going to have a utility function quite similar to the to the Kara utility function, upward sloping but with a decreasing marginal utility. Now the difference between the Kara and this utility function refers to risk aversion. And risk aversion can be denoted by minus the second derivative, CT, over the first derivative. The curvature relative to the slope. And this here now, well, if we calculate this, we have minus, and in the numerator, minus sigma CT to the power of minus sigma minus 1 over CT to the power of minus sigma. And this can be simplified because in the numerator and in the denominator you have the same thing, c to the power of minus sigma, so we just take out the minus sigma here, which leaves us overall with minus and minus cancel out, so we have sigma over ct, yeah, that's it. CT to the power of minus 1 just moves to the denominator. 
So what you see here is that risk aversion gets smaller the larger consumption is. And this is a property that is quite attractive to a number of macroeconomic problems. And it is called constant relative risk aversion. Risk aversion is constant only relative to the total level of consumption. So it decreases with consumption and what is constant only is here the numerator. And this is attractive for reasons that I want to tell you about today. When you have a look at this utility function, uh, you should understand the difference in the curvature. Now I have the utility here. and consumption here on the x-axis. And please recall that we had one particular shape for the camera. We started at point three here, and then the camera went somewhat like this. Now this utility function will be different because when CT is very small, close to zero, then the curve will be very steep. So basically, we can start with a curve around here and very steep. And afterwards, it's getting flatter. The larger the CT is, it will start to be flat, flatter than the Kara. So it might look a little like this here. So this is now my CRR. To understand its properties, let's have a look at the resulting consumption path. And we derive this path by help of the Euler equation. And the Euler, please recall, the Euler is the first derivative of CT must be equal to 1 plus r times the first derivative at ct plus 1. It's the question on how to allocate consumption across different rounds and how far there is an incentive to postpone consumption. And this is driven by the incentives of the real interest rate. Now what we want to include today also is time preference. And this would be added just as a beta. This is time pre preference. Time preference. And the beta will be, well, somewhere between 0 and 1. And calmly, it's close to 1. If you have a value of 0.95, for example, it would indicate that future consumption is valued today only sort of 95% of what we have today. We don't care so much about future consumption and we prefer to consume today. Now this would be a force that runs counter to the real interest rate. The real interest rate induces us to postpone consumption, time preference, oh and let me briefly interrupt because my uh, computer is 
still is not showing. Yes. We were back. So this is a force that equalizes that. So for example, if you assume beta times 1 plus r to be equal to 1, then basically we want consumption to be constant. Now once we have this, we can now just insert the first derivative is the C T to the power of minus sigma, which must be equal to beta times 1 plus R times C T to the power of uh, C T plus 1 to the power of sigma. Well, we can have this a little more comfortable. For example, if we take logarithms of this, then we have the logarithm of ct to the power of minus sigma, which should be equal to the logarithm of beta times 1 plus r plus the logarithm of consumption t plus 1 to the power of minus sigma. Now there's an attractive feature of this logarithm because whatever we have as an exponent, we can put this in front. So we just basically move this exponent here put it up front as a constant here. And once we have it there, we can just divide by minus sigma such that we get the logarithm of ct. And I'll bring this logarithm to the other side minus the logarithm of ct plus 1 must be equal to the logarithm of beta times 1 plus r over minus sigma. So again, this is negative, telling us that consumption must um, increase over time. So current consumption must be smaller than future consumption. But to what extent? Well, we can still simplify this observe that the logarithm of this minus this can also be written as, I'm, I'm continuing up here, can be written as the logarithm of ct over ct plus 1. Okay? And this term can be approximated because the logarithm of beta times 1 plus r will be pretty close to 1. And once this is so, we can approximate this by beta times 1 plus r over sigma. Or basically, what you can also do is sort of take out the, the logarithm now, take uh, the um, exponential function on both sides. And then you get ct over ct plus 1 must be equal to e to the power of minus beta times 1 plus r over sigma. And this is smaller than 1. And, quite important, it is a constant. Let's say this is 0.98. If this is so, then what we have derived is a constant ratio between current and future consumption. And when we then have a look 
at how consumption will develop over time. Then you know the ratio between a value today and the one in the future. This ratio will always be equal. And as a consequence, we have an, an exponential function here. Now, why is this attractive for macroeconomists? Because we tend to think in growth rates. We always tend to think of consumption growing by a certain percentage over time. And this is what we then see here. And there are some resulting attractive consequences. For example, that we will have a constant savings rate across time. So if we would follow a CARA utility function, we would have a linear um, development over time, which is rather unrealistic. So this is rather the type of utility function that is attractive in macroeconomics and from this